So in the video today, we're going to go over the Unit 1, Section 4 notes. Um, we're going to talk about angles formed by parallel lines and transversals. So um, this was our review from yesterday. Uh, this was the symmetric of equality, um, reflexive of congruence, transitive of equality, symmetric of congruence, reflexive of equality, and transitive of congruence. So, the way I taught my students was reflexive has to do with one thing on either side of the symbol. Um, symmetric has to do with two things and transitive has to do with three and whether it's congruence or equality is determined by whether there's an equal sign or a congruence symbol. Equality is equal, congruence is obviously the congruence symbol. Um, in our warm-up we're going to talk about if two angles are complementary to the same angle then they are, so what I mean by that is complementary, if you recall, means that two angles, um, when you add them together, their sum is 90 degrees. So if we had an angle that was uh, two angles that were 40 degrees and 50 degrees, um, then we could say that the two angles that are complementary to the 50 degrees would be 40 degree angles. That means they must be congruent. If two angles are right angles, what else can you say about them? Well, obviously here, again, you could say they were congruent. And this term supplementary, if you recall again, it means that when the sum of the angles is 180 degrees. So here again, if we had um, a 100 degree angle and then two angles that would be supplementary to that would both be 80 degrees, which means both of those angles would be congruent. The objective today of the lesson is that we can prove and use theorems about the angles formed by parallel lines in a transversal. Our vocab um, and is that what we're going to be able to identify when we finish today are using the properties pertaining to parallel lines, transversals, vertical angles, linear pairs of angles, corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, and same side interior angles. So parallel lines first. Um, when we see parallel lines in a drawing, and this is really, really important, um, anytime we have those lines that are parallel, they're going to have an extra set of arrows on them that indicates to us that those two lines are parallel. Um, and we can see here in this drawing that A, line A here, and line B are parallel because of this extra set of arrows right here. So we could say that A is parallel to B, and that's our parallel symbol right there, two lines right next to each other. Now when we talk about the transversal, the transversal is, a, is the line um, that intersects two or more coplanar lines at different points. So that's this line here, this T. So that is our transversal. It intersects um, two or more lines. Um, our next one is vertical angles. And a vertical angles are a, non, a pair of non-adjacent angles formed by the intersection of two straight lines. Um, so that would be like here. 1 and 3, those are vertical angles. Or we could talk about 2 and 4 here, those are vertical angles. Down here, 5 and 7 are vertical angles. And 6 and 8 are vertical angles. Oops. So those are all the different pairs of angles that are vertical angles in this drawing and vertical angles are congruent. Linear pairs are two angles that have a common side and form a straight line. So when we're talking about linear pairs, we're talking about one and two here. Those form a straight line. Two and three form a straight line. Three and four right here form a straight line. And then obviously one and four form a straight line. Down here, five and six, eight and seven, five and eight, sorry, and six and seven there. So any pair of angles that form a straight line and share a side, those are what we call linear pairs. And linear pairs of angles, because they form a line, are supplementary, meaning that their sum, the sum of their angles is 180 degrees. So our next one here is corresponding angles. Now, corresponding angles are two angles that have the same corresponding position. So the way I like to explain this is they're on the same side of the transversal and the same side of the out of the line. So I always tell everybody to underline these words same, same, because that's a great way to remember them. So if we talk about the same side of 
the transversal. That would be 1 and 5 are on the same side, but they're also both above the parallel lines. So that would be our same, same. And over here as well, 2 and 6 are um, corresponding angles. 4 and 8 are corresponding angles. And 3 and 7 are corresponding angles. And I want you guys to notice that when we're talking about these corresponding angles, if we're talking about 1 up here and 5, they're both obtuse angles. If we talk about 2 and 6, they're acute angles. And that's a trick. That's a way that you can kind of tell that these angles are going to be congruent because the only relationships that are going to exist when we have two pairs of parallel lines is they're either going to be congruent, the angles are either going to be congruent to each other based on these relationships, or they're going to be supplementary to each other. Our next one is alternate interior angles. And when I say alternate, I mean something like I took an alternate route to the school this morning, and that means I took a different route. So we're going to talk about then the first word has to do with how they relate to the transversal. The second word has to do how they relate to the parallel lines. So the alternate has to do with they're on either side, opposite sides of that transversal. And the interior has to do with the fact that they're inside. So here we've got four and we've got six. Those are on opposite sides of the transversal and they're inside the parallel lines. And then here we've got five and three. Again, opposite sides of the transversal and inside the parallel lines. These two are congruent and the reason they're congruent is the same. Um, Look at the angles. You can tell because they're either acute and they match or they're um, obtuse and they match. Okay, so then we got alternate exterior angles. Now we talk about alternate exterior angles. Again, we're talking about alter alternate. So we're talking about different sides of that transversal. So we're talking about angle one up here and it's exterior. So they're outside the parallel lines. So we got one and seven there. And then down here, we have two, or up here and down there, I should say, we have two and eight. Again, opposite sides of the transversal and outside the parallel lines. Alternate exterior angles are also congruent. Our final one here is same side interior angles. Now this time we're talking about angles that are on the same side of the transversal, so they're going to be either on this side or they're going to be on this side. So, And then it says interior, so we're talking about same side interior, so we're talking about this angle right here and that angle right there. And as you can tell, those angles are going to be supplementary because they're not the same shape. Here we've got three and six. So those are our same side interior angles. And again, those are supplementary. So the only two pairs of angles that we've talked about in um, this introduction of these various different types of angles that are supplementary are going to be your linear pairs in your same side interior angles. Those are the only two. Okay, so now let's go through this drawing and see if we can figure out what these angle relationships are. So first we're talking about one and three here. I want you guys to notice that immediately that they're on the same side of the transversal and they're on the same side of the parallel lines. So what that means is that these are going to be corresponding angles. And this time they're not congruent because those lines are not parallel. So now let's look at three and six. So 3 and 6, notice that those angles are on opposite sides of the transversal and they're inside the two lines. So that would be alternate interior. Then we have 4 and 5. So we're talking about this angle here and this angle here. Again, they're on opposite sides of the transversal, um, alternate sides of the transversal, and they're outside the parallel or the lines, so that's going to be alternate exterior. Then we have six and seven. Six is here, and seven is there. Those are on the same side and inside, so those would be same side interior. Then we have seven and eight. Seven and eight are here. Seven and eight, and notice here that they form a line. So these are what we call a linear pair of angles. Then finally we have 2 and 5. So 2 and 5 you'll be able to see here that these angles are opposite each other. So we got 2 here and we've got 5 here and those opposite angles are vertical angles. 
All right, so now you should fill in these blanks if you haven't already filled in your notes. When a parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the angle pair formed, the angle pairs formed are either congruent or supplementary. That's not true of all drawings because the one we just did is not like that, but that's because the two lines are not parallel. So let's go through this one more time. So this time we have if uh, two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. So we have that one here and three here are congruent. We have that two and four are congruent. And again, notice that one and three are obtuse angles and two and four are acute angles. Then we have five down here and we have seven right here, corresponding positions. Then we have six here and eight there. Same, same, same side of the transversal, same side of the uh, parallel lines. And again, we knew these were parallel because that extra set of arrows that's on the lines P and Q. Then we talk about linear pair theorem. If two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. Obviously, we know that um, any angles that form a line, their measure is going to be 180 degrees. So when we add them together, their sum is always going to be 180. Next was the alternate interior angles theorem. Here we're talking about, again, alternate sides. So this is alternate to there, and they are inside the parallel lines. Then when we talk about three and two, same thing, alternate sides of the transversal and um, inside the parallel lines. Remember again that alternate interior angles are congruent. Um, same side interior angles. Uh, whoops, I think I, that was exterior. No, that was interior. I skipped this next one. This one right there. Oh, okay. So then we have alternate exterior angles theorem, and it says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then these two pairs of alternate exterior angles are congruent. So here we have, again, um, 5 and 8. They are on alternate sides, opposite sides of the transversal, and they are outside the parallel lines. And then we have Oops. Then we have six and seven. Again, alternate sides of the transversal and um, the outside of those parallel lines. These alternate exterior angles are also congruent. Last one is same side interior. So here when we start talking about this one, we're talking about same side of the transversal. So these are both on this side of the transversal and they're inside the parallel lines. So one and three there. And over here again, same side and inside. So same side interior. These, when we add them together, are going to be supplementary. And we can tell that again. The hint to us is that they're not the same shape angles. One's acute, one's obtuse. So when we add them together, they're going to be supplementary. So now, these are the angle relationships. When it's a linear pair of angles, they're going to be supplementary. That means their sum is going to be 180. Vertical angles, corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, those are all congruent. Then our same side interior angles are 180 degrees. And we're not going to really deal with same side exterior angles, but if you look at those angles, you can tell they're not the same shape. One's acute, one's obtuse, so those are also going to be supplementary. So we're going to work through this drawing now and work this problem. So it asks us to find the angle measure for angle ECF. So the first thing we have to do is find angle ECF. Angle ECF is out here. Immediately you should notice that um, angle ECF is congruent with angle CBG. These two angles right here are congruent. Um, and the reason they're congruent is because they're corresponding angles. So the corresponding angles postulate is the first thing I want you to write. And then you can say that X is equal to 70. Um, the measure of ECF is. So again, you can tell that these two angles are congruent because they're corresponding angles. Same, same, right? So that means this angle right here is 70 degrees. Now when we talk about finding the measure of DCE, let's figure out where DCE is first. This time DCE is up here. Now there's a couple ways we could solve for DCE. So I'm going to walk you through the first one and then we're going to talk about the second one. So if we talk about the corresponding angles postulate, again, you should notice that these two angles right here are corresponding. So this one corresponds to this one. Um, so ABC corresponds to DCE. So when we talk about that, then we can then, um, because they are congruent, we can set them equal to each other. 
and solve for x and then plug that x back into the 5x equation and that's going to give us that the measure is 110 degrees. Now I want to talk to you about the other way that we could solve this. The other way we can solve this is by using the fact that this pair of angles right here is a linear pair. We knew that this angle down here was 70 degrees, this angle. So if we use the linear pair way of solving this, the linear pair postulate, then what we would do is do 180 minus 70 and that equals 110 as well. Now notice that I put that 70 degrees down there in that angle and that's a good practice once you find the value of an angle is to stick it in there. Alright, now let's look at this one. This one's your check it out. It says find the measure of QRS. So we're looking for QRS. That's that angle right there. This is the one we're looking for. So I want to see what kind of relationship do we see in this shape and I see that QRS um, is supplementary to 118. Why can I say that? Because those are same side interior angles. So I could go ahead and solve the problem that way. Let's talk about that first. So we could say that the question mark plus 118 is equal to 180 and we would do that because of same side interior angles. Same side interior angles theorem. That's what that stands for. Okay, and so that means our question mark would be equal to 62 degrees. Now that's not the only way to solve this problem. We could do it using the corresponding angles. Now where do you see corresponding angles? You should see that this angle is congruent with this angle. So we could put that 118 right there. So if we do the problem that way, then we're using our corresponding angles postulate first to say that x was 180. And then we're going to talk about the definition of a linear pair. So when we talk about the, the linear pair, um, that is the same thing as we talked about before. So we add those two angles together, they equal 180. So that's what we're going to do is subtract 118 from 180 and it's 62 as well. So there are two ways to do this problem. You can do whichever one you, you determine you would prefer. Um, I'm going to skip this one and we're going to go on to this one. Remember that postulates are statements that are accepted without proof since the corresponding angles postulate is given as a postulate it can be used to prove the next three theorems. Okay so for each angle measure. So now we're going to go and find EDG now. Again so I'm going to label it EDG. So that's the angle that we're looking at here. Now here again this can be we could use multiple different things that we've just learned. So we could use the fact that we have a linear pair here. So if we did that, let me write linear pair here. If we did that, then we would say, that's the definition of a linear pair, x plus x minus 30 equals 180, right? We could solve it that way. Um, another way that we could solve it is these corresponding angles. Hopefully you see that this angle corresponds with this angle. And that would be corresponding angles postulate. That's my angle symbol right there, y'all, in case you're wondering what that is. Uh, and that would be 2x minus 135 equals x minus 30. There's a third way. This way has to do with the fact that this angle down here is congruent to that angle up there. And that's the alternate exterior angles theorem. Now when we do that, we can literally just say that this angle down here is 75 degrees because they are congruent. So our answer here is 75 degrees. Our next one is finding the measure of BDG. Now, oh, by the way, if you were to solve all these up here, then you're going to get 75 for them, for every one of them. So um, your x, uh, which you would get when you plugged x back in. So let's go ahead and solve this one up here so you guys can see it. x and x is 2x, so this would be 2x equals 150, so x is equal to 75. Y'all see that? Um, Did I do that right? 
Oh no, I didn't do that right. Let me check that back. Sorry, y'all. Can't do my math this morning. I got a minus there, right? Okay, so 2x equals 210. There we go. Because when we add that 30 to the 180, so x is equal to 105. So 105 minus 30 is indeed 75. Here, if we were to do this other one, that would be 2x minus x. That's x equals, if we were to move the 135 to the other side, that is also 105. So when we plug that 105 in there for that angle, 105 minus 30 is 75. So hopefully you guys can see that. Let's now talk about BDG. So angle BDG, BDG is this angle right here. So it's this one. So now, again, there are multiple ways I could solve for this. Um, I could solve it using same side interior. Angles theorem. Be good if I could spell. Okay. So now with that one, those two angles are supplementary. So we would say 2x minus 135 plus x equals 180. So when we uh, add that 135 to both sides, we're going to get 3x equals 250, oh, sorry, 315. And so x is going to equal 105. We already knew that from prior, right? So um, that would be the measure of x. Now also notice down here, there's another way we could do this. We could do this with that linear pair. When we do that, we would say um, that that bottom angle was 75. So 180 minus 75 is equal to 105. So that would be the measure of this angle up here, 105. So hopefully that, that shows you there's a lot of different ways to do these problems. Um, and you're going to have to choose the one that makes the most sense to you. All right, let's go on to this one. Find angle A, B, D. This is the check it out. You might want to pause, come back to me, but I want to show you this first. These are the two angles that we're actually looking at. A, B, D is this angle right here. This is the one we're going to find, but we're going to use that relationship we just showed right there. So these angles are alternate interior angles. So we're going to use the alternate interior angles theorem which tells us that they're congruent, right? So we're going to say that this angle is congruent with that angle. We're going to set them equal to each other. We're going to subtract 2x from both sides and add 15 to both sides. We get uh, 25 is equal to x, right? We have put that back in. 2 times 25 is 50 plus 10 is 60. So that was the, me the measure of angle ABD.